Hello, and welcome to the How to Exit podcast. Today, I'm here with Roland Frazier. Roland is an investor and business strategist with over a thousand acquisitions and exits completed for him and his clients. I'm super excited to be here. Full disclosure, one of my mentors too, man. So to have you on the show is just a real treat for me. Thank you for being here today. Um, how did you get into this space? I know it's just not a, like you didn't wake up one day and say, I'm going to go into M&A, right? So he- yeah, it, it was a, a little bit of an evolution. I, I started out when I was 18. I got my real estate salesperson's license and started selling real estate. Um, and the guy, you know, pretty quickly, I saw that I didn't really want to go around banging on doors to get onesie twosie listings to sell. And so I was like, well, who's got a whole bunch of listings to sell? Developers. So started talking to developers, um, uh, ended up getting in with a couple of those guys to be able to sell their listings so I didn't have to go out looking and then started looking at how they were raising money to do deals. I was like, how do you put this stuff together to where you're doing like 300 houses or something like that? And they're like, well, we buy the land and do the entitlement and um, and we go out and get investors and we use these things called limited partnerships. And I was like, okay, well, tell me how that works. And they did. And I was like, okay, well, so I, at night when I was 19, I got my insurance license. When I was 20, I got my securities license. So it was like, can I start helping you guys raise money and started doing that through the firm that um, one of the firms in New York that I hung my securities license with. I got introduced to some people at Prudential Securities. And um, at the time, this is the late 80s, uh, leverage buyouts were super, super hot. And so I got kind of taken under the wing of one of those investment bankers and they were showing me how you can use the assets of a company to pay for itself. And I was like, that's the coolest thing ever because I was doing real estate deals and no money down and stuff like that, but I didn't know that you could do it with businesses. And so um, I started doing that and um, kind of never stopped because I just like along the way, I was like, well, I could probably take a lot of the stuff I learned about real estate and apply to acquisitions as well. And then um, started looking at well, okay, well, it's nice to own companies, but it's also nice to exit because when you exit, you get paid several years of profit all in one go. So if I can buy enough companies that I can exit several of them a year, every year I could have 30, 40, 50 years of income. And that sounds pretty exciting. And so I just kind of followed the path to doing that along the way. I got my accounting degree, I got my law degree, practiced law for several years, but all along I've been really, really just kind of an entrepreneur at heart. Let's talk Great. about the opportunity a little bit. A lot of people don't understand how vast this opportunity, is, especially in our point in time in history. Yeah, it, it's um, it, it's kind of shocking. There, there are several things that are kind of conspiring to make it a great opportunity. To, to me, the three most important ones are that you've got 12 million baby boomers that are kind of aging out at this point, a lot of them in their businesses, and some of them will go forever, but but it's about 12 million total that own about $10 trillion worth of businesses. And so over the next 10 years, we can expect thousands and thousands and thousands of deals to become available. The, the, the other thing that impacts this is that a lot of those people, when they decide they want to sell, they find they, they haven't built a sellable business. So they don't ever get to the point where they can sell it because they start talking to people and they're like, well, you're an owner operator. And if you leave, the business is gone. You don't really have a business. You have a job. And so it's going to be awful hard to sell that. Now they could professionalize and bring management in, but a lot of them don't want to do that or don't know how. And so a lot of those people about 600,000 a year, just close the doors to the business. And then the other thing is, is that only about 20% of the people that decide to list their business for sale actually get a sale as a result of listing the business. And so between the closure, the closings and the failures, the uh, number of people who are kind of clamoring now to sell their businesses, who, by the way, their kids want to be Instagram stars. They don't they want to be influencers. They don't want to be a car wash owner, or parking lot owner, laundromat owner, right? Uh, that That's not terribly exciting compared to taking your picture in a, you know, private airplane seat that you rent for 15 minutes. And, um, my the, six-year-old uh, just says she wants a YouTube market, channel. <laughs> yeah, right. And then that market inefficiency, like that, that, that it doesn't have the capacity to handle. There isn't a good, it's very fractured, the market for selling businesses. And so until you get up into investment banking, um, it's just interesting how far behind that is compared to something like real estate. To me, like, like the, what we talked about is a good place to start. Like kind of if, if I'm looking at a deal and I can come in and provide value. And in exchange for that, 
I can get a piece of the company. That's exciting for me because the company is already existing. It's already making profits. It already has all its operations and operators. And um, then I'm going to do the thing I do. And that company doesn't need me to be there on a day-to-day -day basis to continue to operate. So I think like the first level is, can I provide this company some capital in the form of the knowledge, spills, ex knowledge skills, experience, and connections I've got in exchange for an equity interest? Then if I can do that, no money out of pocket, I have a piece of the deal, I do my thing, and then I get paid. Um, on the other hand, if that doesn't seem to be an option, and you're thinking, well, I'd actually like to just acquire a company to own the whole company, and um, that's possible too. And you can go the traditional route, which would be you pay some level of cash for that, which is typically a combination of cash you've got and saved and loans, uh, which require credit. Or you can go kind of the alternative way, which is my favorite thing to do, which is to say, what are the ways to let the business pay for itself? So this all harkens back to the days with um, the guys in New York looking at their leveraged buyouts saying, you know, they're buying billion, multi-billion dollar companies without any money. That's pretty crazy. How are they doing that? Well, a lot of it is debt. That's the leverage part of leverage buyout. I think change always creates opportunity. So I, I think that I would way rather see a recession coming than a continuing bull market that goes on 20 years. Uh, because within that comes great opportunity. We just have to be astute to recognize what the opportunity is. So as the economy trends towards recession and uh, the Fed just said today, you know, hey, we're not we're not uh, going to ease up on interest rate increases. And um, and we've got two quarters of reduced or falling GDP. Um, but we've got contrary signs too. We've got a stock market that the S&P is up over 50% from its lowest peak to its highest peak year over year. So the two quarters of GDP contraction indicates recession. The two quarters or the one year with 50% up in S&P indicates bull market. Who knows what's going to happen, right? Well, what we do know is that interest rates are going to go up for a little bit. They're certainly higher than they've been. That means debt is more expensive. That means that the people who are trying to sell businesses that are small are going to have a harder time selling those businesses than they were in the past if debt is being used to acquire them. We don't really use uh, commercial debt. And so we can kind of set the interest rates we want. Now, you might argue, well, the expectation of sellers would be to receive a higher percentage interest rate, but that also isn't the case because the um, the seller wants to sell the business, right? So as long as you find somebody that wants to sell the business, and we're always looking, by the way, for motivated sellers. We're not looking for somebody that's like, well, I don't want to sell, but you know, if somebody pays me stupid money, I'll sell. That's not who we want. How do you get started in something like this? What What's the, I mean, I, I, a lot of people spend years searching for their first deal and that type of stuff. Um, where do you suggest people um, like kind of get their, their teeth cut or what do you want to call it when I'm like, you know, break it, break it in into, into this space and, and try to figure this out. It's, it's a great question. I think something that a lot of people struggle with, but the, there's really a few ways to do it. The one way is if you have people who are asking you consistently, like if you look back over the last 90 days and say, did anybody ask, can I pick your brain? Did anybody say, you know, can I take you to coffee? Can you help me with this problem? Could I give you equity in my company? Can you uh, give me some advice on my business? Any of those things, those are all great clues that people value the knowledge, skills, experience, connections that you've got. And um, most of us either just say no and uh, and and because they don't want to be bothered or we say, sure, and we go and have the two-hour lunch and they ask us all the questions and then they don't do anything with the great advice that we gave them. So what, what I found to be something that works really well is instead of being frustrated at all the people that are asking for advice and then you give your time and then most of them don't take it, uh, you can say, look, the way I do that is with a consultation. And to me, it's the way I do that is with a half-day consult. Uh, we'll take a look at the problems that you've got and the challenges you're facing, the constraints you're experiencing, and we'll break through them and get you from where you are right now to where you want to go. The investment, not the cost, but the investment to do that is $25,000. That's what I've chosen to do. Other people could do any different amount. 
Um, and we'll spend uh, up to four hours going down and breaking through that. If that's something that sounds like a fit, let me know and I'll, I'll give you my one page consulting agreement and wiring instructions. And if not, no harm, no worries, uh, no foul. But I only have time to work with my paying consulting clients and my portfolio companies. So saying that, like having that kind of down pat is really helpful because A, it screens out all the people that aren't willing to invest in themselves and B, it converts all those things that you're throwing off right now that are potential deal flow into deal flow. And so, um, and, and the other nice thing is, is that by putting up a filter of some fee for your initial working with them, you not only weed out the people that won't invest in themselves, but also you can pick up a decent side hustle income. The story time, I always like some good stories and stuff. What's one of the coolest things you've ever helped either buy yourself, you know, buy a piece of for yourself or, or one of your, one of your clients, one of your students. You know, there, there's so many deals in there to me, they're just all fascinating. So I, I like the, uh, I think that like the kind of the big game changers are fun. Um, I remember sitting in, um, sitting down at a restaurant with, uh, the owner of a publishing company. And, um, we were talking about acquiring and I had just experienced some pretty significant losses. So I didn't have a ton of cash handy, but this deal was really good. And I'd been working on it for a couple of years and, um, they sat down and they had just had, uh, some challenges with some key personnel that were leaving and it opened up an opportunity to, invest in the company. Um, and when we had first talked, we were talking about a valuation of around $10 million, but because they needed some cash to fix the things that were going wrong, um, they wanted a million dollars. And so there was the opportunity to acquire 33% of the company for a million dollars. So that's a 70% discount in the valuation, right? Going from 10 million to uh, to 3 million as a valuation. So I sat there and, and, uh, you know, we, we had uh, breakfast and then, you know, they said, so, you know, if you, if you're interested, let's do this and we'll do it for a million dollars. And I was like, absolutely. Sounds great. Now I didn't have a million dollars, nor did I know where I was going to get the million dollars, but that didn't stop me. I just to say yes, and I'll make it happen, which I would highly recommend for anybody. And, um, and then we were able to talk about that. And I said, well, you, you guys need that all at once. And he's like, no, I don't think we need it all at once. And I said, well, how about uh, if we did, and we went back and forth and we ended up with, um, I'll, I'll get $400,000 down and then they'll do $200,000 a year for three years. No interest, just $200,000 a year. But I also was able to negotiate that, like, well, not negotiate, but I also knew that the profits that would be coming to me from the business would be about $360,000 a year. So I knew that I could even after taxes pay that 200 K. So all I had to do was come up with the 400. Um, and I knew that if I could get a deal on the 400, that would allow me to pay that back over time. Then it was likely that the business was going to make even more as time went on. But even if it didn't, I'd still have, now this would be pre-tax, but I'd still have 360,000 minus 200,000 over those three years would mean I'd have 160,000 extra, right? So that would mean that I would have 480,000, which would give me enough to pay off the 400 and then still have 80 left over. Again, taxes notwithstanding. But I would work out, I mean, I'd probably go in hock to the IRS for a deal <laughs> like that and pay the interest and get a payment plan worked out if I had to. 